All right, thanks, Christy. This is Chris Wilper. Um, I am uh, Fedora's technical lead for DuraSpace, and today I'll be talking a little bit about a service that I've been working on um, for a little while now um, called Fedora Cloud Sync, and it's a tool that's intended to be used to exploit DuraCloud's capabilities with Fedora. So let's see, before we get started with that, um, for those who aren't familiar with DuraSpace, uh, we are a nonprofit US-based group, pretty small group, um, that grew out of um, the organizations that grew out of DSpace and Fedora products. Um, so it used to be the um, DSpace Foundation and Fedora Commons, um, and we came together um, due to mutual interest in the sort of common goal of preserving our digital heritage, whether that's scientific um, research data or more cultural heritage kind of information. Um, we had a lot of overlap and decided to come together to not only grow and sustain the existing communities and support them, uh, but to look at other opportunities that were out there and um, how we can be creative and um, bring some new value to this arena. So DuraCloud came out of that. And uh, we've got a, just a brief overview of DuraCloud. Um, DuraCloud is both the technology and a managed service for using cloud infrastructure for preservation and access. Um, what that means, first of all, is that DuraCloud is open source software. You can grab the software and run it in your own data center. Um, but DuraSpace is also running DuraCloud as a hosted service um, for folks who don't have the time, bandwidth, etc., to um, run that in their own infrastructure. Um, so that's an option. And secondly, um, the main focus around DuraCloud is um, really around preserving data that folks in, in our communities are interested in preserving. The thing that's distinctive about DuraCloud as a technology is that, or actually as a service, as, as well as a technology, is that when you upload content to the one endpoint of DuraCloud, um, DuraCloud can be set to make multiple copies to various storage providers. So that includes things like Amazon, um, Rackspace, Microsoft. So you can write your code or utilities to work against DuraCloud APIs and actually have the sort of peace of mind that you have not only redundancy among different data centers, but also different cloud providers, or the ability to switch from one cloud provider to another if one's providing better service for you. So DuraCloud helps to mediate that. Um, Hopefully, I see that someone's having some trouble hearing. Hopefully, um, Christy, can you confirm? Are you able to hear me all right? Yes, Chris, we can hear you. OK, thanks. Um, also, DuraCloud is, um, like any cloud-hosted solution, um, one of the values is that it makes the content available um, through any internet-connected device. Um, so the main use cases we're shooting at with DuraCloud were around archiving and preservation. Um, that includes backup, um, both um, trying to keep your systems online while you're doing backups, and also allowing for some notion of off-site backups, um, where the data isn't just in your local data center if you have a local disaster. Um, restore from cloud to local. Synchronization, so that's more sophisticated than just doing a straight copy. Um, that's reflecting changes from one place into another place and vice versa. Duplication, and that's kind of what I talked about with the distinctive feature of DuraCloud, is making sure that you have the opportunity to automatically or manually copy data from one cloud provider to another. And integrity checking. Um, one of the sort of cornerstones of, of a good preservation strategy. So really shooting for those use cases initially. And then on the access side, 
trying to ensure that folks could take advantage of their content being out in the cloud by providing image viewing on top of just straight storage and as well as media streaming capabilities. So when we set out to develop um, DuraCloud Fedora integration, we had um, knowledge of several folks that were using Fedora that were also interested in some of the DuraCloud capabilities we've been talking about. So this is just to um, acknowledge those folks that helped out kind of early on in this process. In particular, I want to point out um, folks at the Colorado Alliance of Research Libraries and Northwestern University were, were very helpful in helping to describe use cases and get some feedback on some early UI prototypes. So thanks for that. Um, we also wanted to make sure we were pretty well grounded in some of our objectives for this project. Um, so this group of folks helped us a lot with that. So now I want to back up a little bit and um, talk about Fedora backups. And um, as folks who have used Fedora before know, Fedora does not provide a built-in backup capability. Um, certainly allows you to export objects, but that's beyond that. You're pretty much on your own. Um, what, what people typically do when they set up Fedora and run backups is what they do with a lot of services that are sufficiently complex is some sort of um, some sort of full database and file level backup solution. So sometimes this involves doing um, file system level snapshots, database dumps, things like that. Um, there's quite a variety of approaches that people have used, but it's notable that um, for a lot of services, one of, the, one of the major challenges is making sure that your data stores are in sync when you do that backup. Um, and Fedora has potentially three or four different data stores that, that we're talking about doing backups with. Um, the relational database, the, the local file system, the triple store, and um, as well as some, some other files. Um, so typically with Fedora, you're doing file and database level backups, and you're doing a, an entire um, snapshot or copy of everything in your repository. And on the restore side, um, it's actually, it, you know, it looks simple here. It's the opposite direction that these arrows are going, but really, Restores can be particularly tough when people actually have have the need to do them um, because you realize when you're doing a restore that you are really restoring a complete snapshot of the state of your repository, which often isn't what you want when you want to restore you know, the scenario of somebody losing a, a bit of data accidentally you know, due to human error or even system error. If, if your data loss is restricted to just a little bit of your repository, you don't want to have to restore the whole thing because um, that can be time consuming and expensive. So, but that's the, the typical solution with these low level backup scenarios. Now with CloudSync, we wanted to, first of all, make sure we had a service that could run independently of Fedora and DuraCloud that would sit in between the two. We actually considered running CloudSync as an add-on to Fedora or an add-on to DuraCloud. In the, in the end, we decided we wanted to offer the most flexibility, which is to deploy the service in either in your data center or out in the cloud somewhere um, alongside, you know, on the same host that you're, you've deployed Fedora or not. Um, so we did develop it as an independent service that sits between Fedora and DuraCloud. And what's notable about CloudSync as opposed to the more traditional approaches is that the backups are at the object level. So rather than operating at the very low level file system and database, you actually are able in CloudSync, as you'll see in a minute, to deal with backups and restores at a object level, which is pretty advantageous. So on the restore side, um, the notable thing here, as I mentioned, selective restores. Um, <clears throat> you Well, because the service is operating against Fedora's front door, that is the Fedora API, instead of the back end, 
we're able to be very specific about which objects we want to back up and restore. Um, so that's that's what we get with Cloud Sync. Um, so just to lay out the comparison here, um, there are certainly other attributes to look at, but I think these are the, the big ones that point out the advantages of Cloud Sync with DuraCloud. Um, first of all, in a typical solution, the granularity you're working with in backups is the entire repository. With Cloud Sync and DuraCloud, you can have any subset for backups, including the whole repository, um, or a single object, or some collection you're particularly interested in. Um, and on the restore side, the same is true. You can, typical solution, you can only restore the entire repository, whereas with Cloud Sync and DuraCloud, you, you can restore any subset. Um, it's particularly notable that in the typical solution, it requires a pretty advanced set of skills to be able to um, perform a, particularly a restore, but both backups and restores are probably going to involve um, some system administration time. So you you know if a, a user of the system notices something's missing, or even somebody who's charged with managing the data, often they're going to have to fill out a support ticket and wait for somebody to come and act on it. And, and even after they act on it, they have to deal with how to resolve the whole set that has been restored with the changes that have happened since the data that you want to restore has been lost. Um, so that's particularly complicated. Um, with Cloud Sync and DuraCloud, because you can do it at one at a single object level, that simplifies the restore portion. Um, but also, it's a very basic set of skills you need to be able to run it. As you'll see, we'll do the web UI for um, Cloud Sync, and you'll see that it's basically some some basic familiarity with Fedora, um, and maybe watching this video to see how it's done, but other than that, it is kind of a self-serve kind of solution. Um, downtime required with the typical solution. Um, it says yes here. I, I think you could you could make an argument that sometimes downtime is not required. It really depends on the solution. If you have a sort of snapshot kind of solution that's particularly sophisticated. Um, but again, on the restore side, things are going to take a while just because you're restoring the entire set of everything that was in your repository. Um, and with Cloud Sync and DuraCloud, absolutely no downtime is required. Um, these things are coming in, again, the front door of Fedora, so they, um, the backup and restore operations are just normal user activities. Um, finally, in a typical solution, if you do want some sort of offsite backup, that's a do-it-yourself kind of thing. Um, your IT department may certainly provide some offsite, you know, tape backup kind of solution for you, um, but your your organization is charged with that. Whereas with Cloud Sync, and particularly um, if you have hosted DuraCloud, um, the offsite aspect is just par for the course. So one um, key difference, I think, to, to consider and just think about is the speed of backups and restores, whether you're using an in-house solution or an off-site, um, particularly cloud-based solution. And it's just something that I think um, is good to think about, that with any kind of off-site storage solution, if you're sending the data over the network, you're clearly going to be limited by the bandwidth from your institution or your LAN to the, the location where you're sending the content. There's just no way around that, right? Um, and in-house approaches where you're actually not sending things to any kind of off-site storage clearly have the potential to be very fast, um, particularly for backups because there are file-level snapshot facilities that people have been you know, perfecting for, for some time, um, LVM and ZFS snapshots being a couple. Um, but if, if you want to really compare the speed of these solutions, it's good to look at the bigger picture, which is um, the, the entire turnaround time and downtime that's going to be involved in doing um, backups and particularly restores. Um, 
it's going to involve people typically if it's a homegrown solution um, more than just one person and potentially support tickets and such um, so it's good to just look at the big picture when you're thinking about the um, the speed okay next we'll be going into the actual cloud sync demo um, this is going to show a quick installation just to show you it's it's actually quite easy to install um, I'll demonstrate adding a user. I'll show how to create what we call a store in Cloud Sync. That's where Fedora data is kept. Talk about creating sets, which are specifications for groups of objects you want to work with. And then I'll operate on a couple example tasks. One to do a complete backup of my local Fedora repository. And another to do a selective restore. And then finally, we'll talk about the REST API a little bit. Switch my sharing over. OK, you should see my desktop at this point, hopefully. Everything looks good, Chris. Great, thanks. OK, so just installation really quick. Um, CloudSync is a Java web application, so what you do to install it is you have a web application container like Tomcat, for example, um, and you just copy the WAR file into the deployment directory. So this is a one-time thing. Um, I've, in this scenario, I've already downloaded it, and I'm just going to copy that WAR file into the appropriate place. Um, instruction, specific instructions are online for this. Um, so now that that's there, I just need to start up my web app container. So that starts Tomcat and installation is basically done at this point. Um, now we'll go to the Cloud Sync entry page. So when I first visit the Cloud Sync page, it's going to ask me to create an administrative account. So I'll go ahead and do that. And then I'll use my credentials to log in. Okay, so this is the main Cloud Sync interface. Um, I'm going to show things from right to left here. So we'll be starting with users. Um, going to the users tab, first of all, um, why is it important to have users here? Well. Clearly, CloudSync is a privileged service. That means it's going to have special access to Fedora and Dura, your DuraCloud account because it needs to be able to read and write from both. So you don't want to just put this out there and not provide protection. So clearly, you need credentials to log into CloudSync. Um, CloudSync requires you have at least one user, but certainly if you have multiple people that you are going to be pointing to this tool to use. It's a good idea to create individual accounts for them. So this, because I'm an administrative user here, I can create extra users. So I'll just click Add and create a user as an example. And you'll see this administrator checkbox. Um, this user, I'm not going to make an administrator. But the, really, the only difference is whether you're able to manage users or add, add and delete users. So that user has now been created, Bob. And we can see Bob. I can promote him to an administrator if I want to, just meaning he can create accounts for people. But I'm going to go ahead and demote him. Um, and I will log out and log back in as Bob. OK, so this is the same interface. You'll just notice the Users tab is removed because Bob doesn't have access to it. So we'll talk about stores. So a store is just a place where Fedora objects and data streams are held. And we've always had, logically, you know, Fedora-based stores only, right? Um, that's where all, all the Fedora content in the world lives. But um, this, in CloudSync, we've conceived of a couple other kinds. And that is a DuraCloud-based store, where things are just uploaded to your DuraCloud space. Um, and also, we have a directory-based store, which is just any location on your file system you want to dump things to. 
I'll be demonstrating DuraCloud and Fedora-based stores for this demo. So first we'll just create a DuraCloud-based store. This is really a matter of just hooking it up to your existing DuraCloud account. So I have one at, at the demo DuraCloud instance that I'm going to use for this demo. So just providing the information for that there. Once I do that, it's asking me, it's queried that account, and it's going to ask me what which storage provider, which backend DuraCloud storage provider I want to use. I'm going to select Amazon S3. Um, remember, DuraCloud lets you set select a variety of those and provide replication among them. But this is asking where you want to initially send content from CloudSync. And then I'm going to select a space that I've set up for this demo. And that's actually an empty space. Finally, this content ID prefix, um, we're not going to use it, but it's basically there to allow you to do multiple backup sets in a single DuraCloud space. But the simple thing to do is just to do a backup into full DuraCloud space. So that's what we'll do here. It's going to ask me to confirm. And it came up with a default name for me. I'm just going to say uh, my DuraCloud space. Change it. And you can see that that's been added. I can view the details and forget it. So I'm going to do the same thing for a Fedora space. This example, I have to provide the base URL to the Fedora repository. Credentials to access it. Again, just asking me to confirm. My Fedora repo. And now we have that. So moving on to sets, these are those specifications of groups of Fedora objects. We have one that's built in called all objects. And that's just a pattern. So you can specify any pattern if you want to create another set like this based on the PID. So if you have a bunch of objects that are in, say, the Bob PID namespace, you can say Bob colon star. Um, you can also specify a particular list of PIDs if you have a specific list you're interested in working with. And you can also specify um, more powerfully lists based on queries. So this requires that you run the Fedora resource index. You can create queries to select an entire collection in your repository. And these can be very um, flexibly written. We're not going to do the queries for this demo, but just keep in mind those are RDF queries. So they act on relationships in the repository. And finally, um, really the meat of CloudSync is about creating and running tasks. So in the Tasks tab, we have active tasks listed, which are none. We have idle tasks, so things that you can run. And logs go in the completed section. So Let's start out by creating a new task. We have an option to just do a list task, which is just a sort of non-destructive operation. just tells me what's in the store. Um, and, and then the normal copy task. So we'll do a copy task here. And this dialog is going to ask me what kind of about details about the copy. Um, I'm going to select that I want to copy all objects, and I want to copy them from my Fedora repository into DuraCloud. Keep those like that. And then, again, I could name it if I wanted to differently. Um, it's asking me if I want to overwrite content. So if something's already in the DuraCloud space, I could choose to overwrite it. I'll, I'll go ahead and keep that selected, even though the DuraCloud space is um, currently empty. And this is asking me if I want to include some objects that have managed content. So, or excuse me, if I want to include all objects in the set that have managed content. So this is just a basic knob that you can turn um, that allows you to ignore some objects in your repository if you want, um, based on whether they have managed content. So a lot of people um, find it um, less expensive to do backups or less time consuming to do backups for um, content.
content that's generally smaller inline data streams or externally referenced data streams. Um, so they might select, they might opt out of this. Um, also, we have the ability to copy externally managed data stream content. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select that. We can talk more about that in detail if folks want to, but uh, this is just ensuring that absolutely everything in my local Fedora repository is copied into Dura Cloud. So I'm going to deselect Run Now and go ahead and save this task. So once you create a task, you can use it as many times as you want. Um, and you could have run it immediately, but I'm just going to show once you create it, you can see all the details again here. You can always click Run to start it. So I'm going to go ahead and click Run. You'll see that it immediately jumps into the active area. And I can open that up and look at it. I can take a look at what it's doing right now by clicking View Log. You can see it's on the fifth object right now. So it's going to take a minute. It's, it's uploading from my local network, which isn't, isn't all that fast, into DuraCloud. Um, so while that's running, I will go ahead and show um, some Fedora objects. Um, let's see. So these are the objects that are being backed up as we speak. This one is the Smiley Stuff Collection, which is just a container object for a bunch of images. I'm going to go into the view representation of this object and hit that, and you'll see this little HTML view of the members of this collection. So each of these is a Fedora object, and it's a member of this collection, and this, this uh, view is actually doing a live query to show everything in the collection. Going back to the Cloud Sync window now, you can see that our task has succeeded. It's also in the idle area, which means we could run it again if we wanted. But let's take a look at the completed task. It says it's succeeded, it gives me the start and finish time, and then the full log of what happened. So for each of these, you can see that it's new in the destination, which means the destination, DuraCloud, didn't have that content. So we've got a backup now. So let's show a demo of uh, accidental data loss. So I'm going to go to the Fedora Web Admin interface, and I'm going to open one of these objects. I'm going to open the Smiley Keychain image. And you can see the details here, but what I'm interested in is I accidentally, let's say I accidentally hit purge. I removed all versions of these data streams, and the, the entire object was accidentally deleted. So now you can see that when you run this view, that object disappears. OK, so um, we would be out of luck, except that we've got a backup in DuraCloud. So I can go now to use CloudSync to restore just that one object. So the first thing is to create a set. And I'm going to create a PID list that just includes that one object. So click Add, and then name it whatever I want. But I need to give it a PID. That's the PID of the object I want to restore. And now I need to create another task. This time, the task will be a copy in the opposite direction. So I want to copy the keychain in DuraCloud to the Fedora repository. And I'll keep all these options selected. And I will, this time, select Run Now. So this time, it immediately goes into the active state. And it's going to be pretty quick. It's running right now. And if you watch, it'll jump down to complete it. There it goes. So I can see the details, but it succeeded. And now when I go back to my collection and hit reload, you'll see that that object and its data stream are back where they were.
um, just because I saw that question, I, um, I will answer it right now since we're on that topic, but there, there is a question section later too. Um, you'll notice in the um, task definition for copy, you'll see that there are two um, options where in the definition I selected my DuraCloud space and then I said the destination is Fedora repo. What that is, is um, it's trying to support the idea that if your object set is defined as a query, let's say it's a resource index query against um, <clears throat> that, that say includes all members of a collection, that you can run that query actually against your um, any repository or any space for which that query will resolve and use the, the resulting list of PIDs as the list of objects to copy from DuraCloud into Fedora. So um, it's, it's basically trying to accommodate the fact that the, the resource index is not stored in DuraCloud. It's just able to be stored in a Fedora repository. So if you have a known working resource index um, that has the objects within it that, um, that are of concern to you, then you can select that as the in value. And then this is actually the real source of the copy operation. This is the source of the query. And that's made a little bit more clear if you look at the copy operation. Um, what was called in on that dialog is actually called the query store. Okay. Um, finally, I want to show the CloudSync API. Um, so CloudSync was designed from the outset to have a REST API, and actually everything in CloudSync operates against that REST API. So this whole UI is actually just a an HTML page with some JavaScript um, that, that operates against this um, REST API. So this is the main entry point. If you install CloudSync, you just go to API slash REST slash service. Um, you can get it in XML or, or JSON flavors. Um, you This is the entry point of the API. The only thing you really need to know is what this is structured like and what, what these various links mean they'll tell you where the various resources are located. So, for example, um, entering this service, if I want to find out what the current user is, I'll just parse the response to this and say, you know, go down to the service and within the current user, user URI, make my user agent hit that URI and look at the response. And this is kind of browsable. Um, so you can kind of click on it to explore the API a little bit um, and just understand what kinds of responses it returns. Um, and other things like the object sets that we defined are visible here. So those are just little data structures that hold the object sets. Um, and various other things, so users, and information about the version of the service, when it was built, things like that. Um, also, if you, um, you know, we certainly imagined that folks would get some use out of this default UI, but recognize that people might want to integrate it in their overall systems um, or might want to um, interact with it in a more limited way or just provide any kind of alternate UI to it. So in addition to the REST API, we actually also have um, use source real quick. Um, it also comes with a little client library in JavaScript. So if you don't want to be bothered with making requests yourself, you can actually just use this little library within your JavaScript um, to provide a, your UI for um, CloudSync. Um, but the idea is, you know, you can hit the ground running without having to do any of that. And that's it for the demo portion. Let me switch back over to slides here.
Let's see which version I've got here. Okay, that's the right version. <laughs> um, okay. So coming up in um, probably near the end of this month is a new version of Cloud Sync. Um, it's actually the version that I just demonstrated has a couple of the capabilities already integrated, so it's kind of a preview of that. Um, one is the ability to copy externally managed data streams. So the current version only lets you copy managed data streams. Um, it also lets you deal with local directory-based stores. So you can do, I should have mentioned, you can do um, copies from any store to any other store. Um, they're sort of treated as peers when it comes to configuring tasks. So you can go from Fedora to Fedora. Um, you know, you can set up a chain. Um, you can go from file to DuraCloud, etc. Um, and also one uh, user suggestion that came in recently was the ability to edit sets. So if you have a typo or something when you're writing a set, right now you have to delete it and rewrite it. So this is just trying to make that a little easier. And also there is a significant amount of REST API documentation on the in the documentation, but um, this is this version will complete that. Some of the future ideas we're looking at are a true sync task. So we call it cloud sync. It should certainly do, do something more analogous to sync, um, which we've always had in mind. But the initial priority was getting backups, just simple backups um, to work. So we want to be able to make one-way syncs work, um, where the source is the, the primary and the destination is really the, um, is always the destination. And two-way, where changes on either end will be propagated to the other end. Um, we've also talked a bit about um, using Cloud Sync as a sort of generic framework for processing groups of Fedora objects. Um, it's certainly well suited to that. So you can imagine a task that takes a style sheet and um, applies that style sheet an XSLT style sheet to every object that's been selected in the source and either does the changes in place or does them in transit to another store. Um, and you can imagine other kinds of implementations for that, one being possibly Java-based where people upload a jar file. Um, another one um, certainly that I, I know would be popular with, with quite a few folks in the community is a lighter weight um, approach that could take maybe a, a JRuby or Jython kind of, or a script, and uh, run sort of group processing against Fedora objects that way. Finally, we've talked a little bit about the idea of a DSpace based store. So there's separate efforts that are looking at translating DSpace objects into Fedora and vice versa. And once we have those definitions defined, it, it's not so far-fetched to think that you could use CloudSync to help um, do ongoing or one-time um, copies of data from, from one to the other. Um, also, there's a little more information about CloudSync online. And if you don't want to remember all these URLs or go to the slides, just, just type Fedora Cloud Sync in Google, and that'll bring you to the homepage, which is a good jumping off point. Um, latest downloads are always available on the DuraSpace Wiki. And we do have a JIRA bug tracker and feature request tracker. So definitely, if, as you think of things, if you're taking a look, um, would appreciate your feedback there. And we also have a mailing list for any more open-ended questions um, or ideas around future development. Um, they'd be well suited for that. Um, also, if you want to find out a little more about DuraCloud itself, um, Carissa Smith, our partner specialist, would be very happy to give you a live demonstration. We also have videos online you can take a look at and get more into the depth of the 
specific features of DuraCloud. We just sort of skimmed the surface here. Um, and this entire series, um, both uh, Tim's presentation that he did last month and mine are available on YouTube as well. So you'll be able to go back and, and take a look at this. Finally, we do have um, free DuraCloud trial accounts. If you'd like to sign up and take a look, um, give DuraCloud a spin, you can get a couple months free. Uh, so if you go to the DuraCloud site, you'll, you can find out more about that. Credits. Um, so also I should credit um, Tim Donahue, whose whose slides I uh, borrowed from. Um, I thought his icons were particularly good, but they're actually from these sources. Um, interestingly, um, this these diagrams here, the typical Fedora back backups are almost exactly like the typical DSpace backups, um, and you'll find that 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 holds true with um, a lot of services that have multiple data stores. So these these I was actually able to um, copy almost verbatim, um, which I just thought was kind of interesting. Um, and that, that covers it for the main presentation portion of the webinar. Um, I think now we can switch over to questions. Right, Christy? Yep, that would be great if you would like to answer for us the first question, which was, how do you automate the tasks? So for example, run a task at a specific time on a specific day. Do we use the REST API for that? Uh, yes, actually. So today, the way you would do that is, is a um, REST API call with a, an external scheduler. Um, so you know, cron jobs, for example, um, calling, calling CloudSync via wget. Um, it should be noted that in the demo, I was um, I was logging in via cookies for authentication, but it also supports HTTP Basic, so um, it's it's quite scriptable. Of course, it's smart to put it behind um, a, a SSL if you are um, exposing it to more than just your local system. Um, so right now, externally scheduling such um, regular tasks is necessary. But we have talked about um, and have been thinking about scheduling internally, so providing something in the UI that would, you know, you'd select daily, weekly, et cetera, and um, be able to do that too. And that's, that's certainly a possibility in the future as well. And I think that takes care of Mike's question as well. Our next question, is there a practical limit to the size of the files that can be transferred? Um, it's really just limited by your bandwidth. So um, we were actually quite careful in the implementation of this service to ensure that at all, at all points where data is being retrieved and written, that it's being done in a way that um, is not limited by memory. Um, so it, um, the practical limits are really more around your disk I.O. and your network I.O. capabilities than any, any artificial software uh, limitations. When copying a versionable managed object, do you copy only the most recent version of the content or all versions? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, that's, that's actually an aspect that we talked about um, early on and initially wanted to make sure we had all the bases covered. So all of the versions are currently copied. Um, but future versions, you can see why you might only want to pay for keeping the latest version um, up to date. So that, in my mind, looks like it might be another checkbox on that uh, task definition screen. And Richard asks, doesn't DuraCloud impose a one gigabyte size limit? 
I actually don't know what the size limit is, but Richard, that's a great point. Um, I, <laughs> I hadn't even thought of that. Um, so that is an area where if you are exceeding the DuraCloud per object limit, um, we would need to actually probably use some of the um, code that, that they've written to help cope with that. And I think what that, and what it boils down to is the underlying cloud storage provider limits um, that we're trying to cope with. So. Um, I see that Carissa and Michelle are typing, so maybe maybe they have some more um, details on that. Okay, so for transferable files, Amazon's limit is 10 terabytes. Um, and I'm not sure, but I, I do know that in at least earlier versions, DuraCloud um, had... Uh, some number of gigabytes. I didn't think it was only one gig, but um, okay. So Dur the DuraCloud service does provide a chunking facility. And actually, I should probably circle back with Andrew and Bill on that. Um, I'm not sure whether that's happening automatically for us. Um, that is, when I make REST calls to the DuraCloud APIs, or whether the chunking needs to be invoked um, manually. If, if the latter, then certainly Cloud Sync should be um, updated to be doing that. But that's a very good point, Richard. And Michelle has been upgraded to presenter status. So Michelle, if there's anything that you wish to add to Chris's explanation, feel free. Just to remind everyone that you can post your question for Chris in the chat window. If you cannot see the chat window, please make sure that your full screen option is not up right now. You need to get out of full screen in order to see the chat window. We do have a few more minutes, so don't be shy. Please type your question for Chris. Okay, this is a more general DuraCloud question. Um, is there a manifest available of all content you have placed in DuraCloud? Um, I think um, well, certainly the DuraCloud APIs allow you to reflect on the list of content you've uploaded. So you can, on demand, take a, take a look at that whole set. DuraCloud also keeps logs of um, upload activities. I'm not sure exactly. I know for some tasks, DuraCloud keeps those logs actually in spaces. So it appears as a file in a special space that you can then go back and get um, to see how certain actions um, occurred. But I know in the general cases, you can just do a full list of everything in, in DuraCloud that you've uploaded. And on that question, Michelle notes that you can submit a manifest or create a manifest when you upload content. And then you can use that for bit integrity checking. So that's right. You um, And that's part of the bit integrity checking service is you can specify after you upload things or while you're uploading them what the expected checksums are and have that verified after the entire upload is complete. Chris, do you expect to be able to couple a sync facility to Fedora's JMS event stream? Um, I could see, I, I could certainly see that as as one way forward. I mean, the advantage of coupling it with the JMS event stream would be immediate um, notification. But there's a there's a need to um, there's also a need to be able to do sort of a whole query of what's in Fedora of interest. So um, I, I see the 
um, that as being the necessary first step is sort of a polling kind of approach where the cloud sync service just does a straight straight query against Fedora um, to see what's there since the last time it did the query, for example, um, and to be able to operate on that. Um, and then I could see a future step being um, you know, having the option to hook up to that JMS event stream. Say, you know, when you're setting up a Fedora-specific store, you can say, well, where's the, you know, where's the JMS um, service located? Hook up to that to make operations more efficient. But certainly, um, the logic around how syncs will work exactly is not um, not real solid right now. So any um, it could go a variety of directions. Does anybody have any final questions? I would like to. Oh, we have. One question coming in, sorry. Could you please explain how to install a private cloud for an instance of Fedora that previously deployed and had many objects now? Um, let's see. I think, I think this might, I'm not sure about the private cloud aspect. Um, I mean, I'm not sure whether this is more about how to install the DuraCloud software locally, or whether it's more about creating a copy of an existing Fedora repository. Um, if it's if it's the former, then um, I, I know there is um, some documentation on the DuraCloud wiki that talks about that and um, sort of helps with setting it up, but for a lot of that, you are also on your own in terms of managing the service and um, you know, setting up the relationships with the, the cloud providers and such. Um, if it's more about creating um, an instance of Fedora that you want to create um, an existing instance that you want to just create a copy of, then um, I'm not sure I understand the question, but if, if that's what it is, um, then CloudSync can certainly help quite a bit with that. So that is, you set up a an empty Fedora repository um, somewhere else, and then you can use CloudSync to replicate all the objects from one Fedora repository to another, or a subset of those objects for whatever kind of testing you want to do. Hopefully that answers the question. Um, and if you want, um, certainly any any further questions as you think of them, um, you can uh, ask the uh, DuraCloud or CloudSync mailing list. Um, let's see, are there any other? Oh, Chris, oh, Chris. is noting that. Go ahead, um, Chris. Yeah, Chris had just provided the the helpful link on. If you are interested in running it locally, um, there is documentation on the wiki there. There's the specific link. I would like to thank all of you for joining us today. And thank you very much, Chris, for a fantastic presentation. Just to let everybody know that our presentation today has been recorded. And the recording link will be placed on the Dura Cloud as well as the DuraSpace website. And we'll be sending you more information about that in the next couple days. So thank you all very much, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks.